Is it upside down? Um. It is. All right. The phone's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> you just do a blooper reel. <laughs> hey everybody, today we bought a storage locker. The first one of 2021. Uh, it's been a long time. Um, I, I'm usually pretty picky about when I buy storage lockers. I don't like to spend too much money. And this one I got very, very cheap. Uh, $37. <laughs> my camera person is, is a bumpy road <laughs> so it's sorry for the shakiness I hope I today I can do at least two loads of stuff from the locker back home I love this stuff you know tag along I'll show you what, what we find any kind of treasures and uh, yeah let's go check it out all right I'm all squared up I paid I have my deposit in the locker is mine the lock is off did we bring a lock? Yeah, we brought an extra lock, okay. Um, so that we can lock it up when we leave. All right, let's open it up. Check this out. These doors, sometimes they're tough. Kinda helps if you open the latch first. <laughs> It's deep. It's deep. This is a 15 by 20. And, uh, oh my god, I think we're in over our heads here. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Here, can I have it all, uh, mm -hmm. I'll just kind of show the depth of it if I can. Alright. Clothing and clothing, but there's like other stuff mixed in with it, right? A whole bunch of jewelry. That piece looks pretty good. The other piece is still kind of stuck in there. Oh, someone let out a little bit of anger. <laughs> We're making slow progress here. Oh man, we have, we've had an epiphany, so a little bit bummed at the moment. This is going to take forever. It's going to take forever. So this is our epiphany that we found this here, a stack of these. And I saw some other stuff like this. Yeah. Oh. So the Ottawa neighborhood news, the Ottawa neighborhood is a charity um, in Ottawa and they do you can see there there's their truck so they do clothing pickup they do pick up for uh, donations I think they may have donation bins around the city and I think that's what we got here we got everyone's donations kind of like a, the bottom of the bottom of the barrel I don't know whether to laugh or cry at this moment. <laughs> We're, we have a good outlook. We have a good outlook. You know, I mean, look at this. Disgusting. Let me look at this stuff. All right. Well, there's not much we can do about this except just keep plugging away at it. I mean, they have me with the $300 deposit. <laughs> Here we go. This is the end of the first day. Can actually walk in here a little bit. Right up to here. Kind of our game plan. This here is our garbage. So we're we cleared out a whole bunch of stuff. We made a garbage pile over here. And we're just about to leave, so we moved the garbage back over here. And we're just gonna keep piling it up and up as we as we go through it all. A couple little neat things. This is a little piggy bank. Some more, more nice stuff in the back here, but it's uh, uh, it's kind of hit and miss. I mean, there's a lot of DVDs. My goodness, a lot of DVDs. I kind of like this lamp. It's like an old banker's lamp, I think, a desk lamp. There's 
neat stuff like that. Yeah, I really like this Buddha. It's all wood. It's like a wood carving. I think that's really cool. There's a couple of his, uh, his minions down in there. I was feeling pretty down about, uh, about this, but I'm starting to feel okay now. And this is our trailer. It's pure clothing. Bags and bags of clothing. And I'm just... Don't know... Don't know our game plan yet. This is after load number four. Parker's helping out. Well, let's do something fun. So there are two cash registers. This one here, I'm pretty sure there's some money in it. There's the lock. Tell I've never done this before. Student card, go and look at that. June 11th, 2011. Could you please fix the bathroom step on Jeannie's side? She's majorly weak <laughs> <laughs> when you step down on it. Oh, she's majorly weak when you step down on okay. it. Safety <laughs> issue, customers when they use bathroom. Right. Anyway. One penny. I think the real money's in the black thing. Think so? Yep. An envelope. Oh. I could really use an envelope full of cash right about now <laughs> to make this all worth it. It's in here. Someone's card. Well, no cash. I think it's a bunch of IOUs. No. Oh, there we go, there we go, guys. It's the Illuminati one. Illuminati? Illuminati penny. There we have it. There is all of our hard work. I bet you what would happen is that the cashiers would get foreign money in their quarter quarter rolls, and then they couldn't give it out, so maybe they just kind of stuck it, you know, down in here underneath it. But there are lots of pennies, so <laughs> maybe there's a full dollar there. Woohoo! We just got back home from doing load number six. So what we've been doing is putting all the clothing clothing in the back of this trailer. This time we have it mixed in with some some documents. In the very, very back corner of the locker, there's lots of paperwork and lots of books. So that's what mostly this stuff is, is paperwork books, some stationary type stuff, uh, file folders full of employee files. And over here is the whole storage locker. Basically, at the, what's left at the locker is one load of garbage. So this pile here, books. This pile here, clothing. And it's big. It's probably about six feet tall, uh, 20 feet wide. Just massive amount of clothing. Massive amount of clothing. Um, this pile here is linens. Uh, you got some duvets, blankets, towels, toys, and kind of uh, some collectibles mixed in here as well. I hate dolls. Did I tell you that before? They're creepy. <laughs> um, found this dollhouse thing. It's uh, metal. Metal dollhouse. There's some neat stuff in there. Found the rest of the trombone. So that's all. Found the, the mouthpiece for it. And uh, it doesn't slide very well, so it's probably it's in need of repair. Found this copper horn. It's kind of neat. Um, found some brass, brass hangers. Yes, pots and pans. This one here is actually kind of nice. It's like solid aluminum, like a little cauldron. Oh, I think that was nice. There's a cast iron one. It's made in France. So, it's 
couple nice things here. Found quite a bit of jewelry. A lot of jewelry. Um, yeah, basically it's all costume. I did find two gold rings and some sterling silver bracelets, which is nice. But uh, yeah, mostly costume stuff. And all this pile here is mostly miscellaneous. Uh, we, we found a lot of CDs, a lot of DVDs. A lot of them. Most We have some other stuff in the shed too that we don't want to get rained on. Luckily, we have a really nice weather window for the next week by the looks of it. This is definitely some one of the pitfalls of going and buying out storage lockers. If I could redo it, I would not have bought the storage locker for sure, for sure. I wish I could turn back time and go back and just not bid on this thing. Um, so I did, did go through, you know, a range of options, some different emotions as well. Um, at first, when we did our first truck load with our truck and trailer, I mean, we didn't even make a dent in a thing and I just was feeling pretty down. And I actually went and talked to the people that owned the, the storage locker yard and asked, and I pleaded with him, kind of asked him, I said, uh, you know, can I get my deposit back? And he just, they just flat out said no. Um, but they did give me more time. So that is good. So they gave me until Monday. It's Saturday right now. We're almost done. We almost got the whole thing emptied out. So that's good. So one of the things that we thought to ourselves was, okay, maybe what we could do is just go through the whole locker, pick out the stuff that we want, you know, find out the good stuff and leave the bad stuff and lose our $300 deposit. So we had that mindset and that was kind of, that got us going. So that was like, okay, let's just start cleaning it out. And, uh, and that's what we, you know, that's, that worked. But, uh, as we started cleaning it out, we're like, okay, let's just do the whole thing. Let's just clean all out, get it back over here and then go from there. So get our, we're going to be able to get our $300 deposit back. I have researched actual textile recycling and uh, they're mostly the big there are a few in toronto which is about four and a half hour drive and so i would need some sort of u-haul you know as for everything else um what our plan is, is to hold max sold auctions and we've done max sold in the past i just haven't vlogged about it yet max sold is a auction site where you can um, put everything up for sale all the bidding starts at one dollar and people bid on it and it can go however much, you know, it can go for a dollar or it can go for $300. You don't know. Uh, depends on what you have. It's a good auction site for getting rid of a lot of bulk stuff. You know, you can put a whole bunch of books together. And uh, we've actually done okay selling books on Maxold. We've done pretty well with our previous Maxold auctions. We've actually made between $1,500 to $2,000 on our past previous auctions and that's with about 100 we usually do uh, about 125 different lots the percentage is a little bit on the high side which is uh, they take 30 percent of your of your earnings of your of what it went for so 30 uh, percent is a bit high this shed as our we call it our max sold shed so this is where we you know take most of our pictures we put out here in a nice sunlight take our picture right there let me turn this on for you it's a bit of a mess, of course, but you know, right in here is where all of our DVDs that we found out of this locker, we put all here. And we usually what we do is put them in lots of genre, you know, action, comedy, rom-com, that sort of stuff. Uh, so we've done all right with that, doing it that way. I found some comics, it's these gold key comics. They're in okay condition. Found some old newspapers from 1939. Kind of interesting to see that sort of stuff. Couple ship models. Um, there was something I want to show you here. Where did it go? Oh, I like this thing. It's a little music box. I think that's really cool. It's all metal. It's a little bit bent. Of course, he's going to get stuck right there. So you got have to bend it back up. I think that's cool. And these things here, they're like uh, cast aluminum wall art. So, yeah, I found those. So, it's, you know, this locker is quite overwhelming, but there are some neat things to it. Yeah, down here, we found a whole bunch of stamps at the, in this locker. 
These books are just filled with stamps. Now they're all used from what I can see. Um, these are more modern ones. But there are some very old vintage ones in here. I won't show them all to you. A bunch of people cutting stamps off of envelopes. Yeah, so just it goes down forever. Anyway, I found this sword, sword thingy that goes along with this stuff. So I'll probably put that in one lot by itself. So it is Monday and we took yesterday off to sort out our pile at home, but I'm back home, back at the storage locker to do one last final clean out. Hopefully I can fit all this in one load, but if I can't, I'm going to come back and then bring whatever's left back home. But right now all this stuff is going to go to the dump and uh, we'll do that. So that's the plan. So I'm going to start loading that up. Any of the loose clothing that's left here, we're going to bag it. Everything else is junk, basically. We got, there's clothing and garbage. Those are the two things. Unfortunately, the, there's a few guitars back there. They're all broken. There's a violin, actually. That's It's all broken up, though. And then a pile of comics that are just wet and moldy. All right, so let's get to work here, little man. What do you say? Yep. All right, let's do it. Well, that went better than I had hoped. We cleaned it all out. There's a few papers glued to the ground here, some boxes and stuff. I can't get that off, but I did sweep and it looks all pretty. The truck is full. We're gonna go straight over to the dump. Hopefully this won't cost me an arm and a leg to get rid of, but it will not cost me $300, which is the deposit. So cost of buying lockers, I guess. We did find a couple things here. Uh, this is just a bag of clothing, but I found some harmonicas. Like a, there's like five harmonicas in there. That's kind of cool. So that was one last good find. All right, we're back at the dump, unloading the truck. The trailer's empty. I just pulled this out of the dumpster over here. I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to pull anything out. But I want to show you this. This guy right here. That's a lead acid battery. It's a giant one. It's probably like probably like 14 inches wide. It must be for something, some sort of, not a forklift, but something else. It's a big battery. Can't believe it. Can't believe they would just throw it out in the dumpster like this. How you doing, Spencer? Good. Back home, and the dump was sixty dollars. So I'm happy with that. Sixty bucks. Uh, that's about the average that I've noticed going there. Man, if I ever worked at a dump, I would, it would not be good because <laughs> I was, I would be pulling stuff out of the dumpster all the time. These retail at Canadian Tire for about $120 and it works. This thing works. I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to make another mess, but doing some sorting skateboards. This is actually a Furby and I checked these guys out on eBay. There's, um, there have been... 659 sales on eBay for Furbies in the last three months. Has old fashioned Jack in the Box glow worm from 1984. And I have a little Fisher Price tape recorder. The, I checked the batteries all, already and there is no corrosion in there, which is excellent. And another old Fisher Price. What do we got here? Spot on, made in the UK. I haven't been able to find comparables of this that I've sold on eBay. Old book. And this here, Biker Mice from Mars. I never watched it, but uh, I think it's like a spin off, kind of riding on the coattails of Ninja Turtles. Yeah, the date's down there, 1994. There are four of them on eBay. Um, that are selling the lowest one is a hundred dollars the highest one is like 150 or so but mine is sealed this is a factory sealed one so that's a nice little find i'd like to tell you guys a little bit about the ons ottawa neighborhood services now uh, i've learned a lot because i have so much of their paperwork everything from employee records payroll uh, all sorts of stuff so i've learned quite a bit about this 
um, little organization that used to be in Ottawa, and it started in 1932. So it's been around for, it was, uh, by the time it closed, it had celebrated its 80th birthday. Now, somewhere down the line, things started to fall apart. Um, I'm not sure what happened. There are a couple things that came into effect that really hurt them. Uh, the number one is the um, for-profit thrift stores like Valley Village, like Goodwill, they started moving in and picking up all of everyone's donations. So they would, they had drop off clothing, drop off bins all over the city and amongst other things. And they really dug into their profits. Uh, the other thing um, is this here. This is a, this is the, a binder. It's a pretty thick binder. And it's basically dedicated to a fire that they had. This is an arson attack that happened in 2012. So in the back of this building here, uh, some kids came along and set fire to this big wooden door. This is all concrete. So by, by the time they moved into this location, they were just down to one. This was their only location that they had. I guess they had to close down all their other stores, um, you know, for whatever reason. I don't know. So, uh, but I think it's, pretty sad what happened to this place because it really meant a lot to the community. I've been finding all kinds of pictures like this. I probably have about five boxes of just framed pictures. You know, this one is the board of directors in 1974. And sadly, I just don't know what to do with these things because there's a lot of them. They're neat pictures, but uh, I can't really do anything with them. So what happened here, some kids went to the back and they set fire. It was in the newspaper. There's some pictures about it. All the damage it caused. Um, this is the dumpster that they also set fire in the dumpster. Now this, this thing is called owned by a company called Tomlinson and they're just this giant conglomerate. They're so filthy rich, but they charged this charity uh, $2,000 for the refurbishment of this dumpster, you know, because I guess the paint all came off. So they charged them $2,000. To me, that's just crazy. Now, the big, big thing that, that this fire caused damage was the water from the fire hose. Um, behind that door was just a big mountain of clothing and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, like mattresses and furniture. It all got completely soaked. This is their cleanup hours. So... Yeah, you can see here the hours for all the people that worked, um, the rates, so it was $12 an hour. And the cleanup was, in employee hours, was $17,000. So when I first read this, I thought that, see it says, water damaged bags thrown out, $52,000. Now when I first read that, I thought that meant that it cost them $52,000 to dispose of it. But I'm starting to think now that that is just loss of inventory, but I'm not sure. Um, and there's 17,000 for cleanup hours. Da oh yeah, fire damaged items thrown out, $12,000. See, I'm not too clear about that, but uh, other related expenses, 4,000. So $86,000. Now this is, the, this is the mountain of clothing that they had to throw out. Imagine all of, all of that going to landfill, just because it got wet. You know, once it's wet, they can't recycle it. Yeah, here's the bill from Tomlinson. Um, burnt roll-off bin refurbishing charge, refurbished charge for burnt bin, bin caught on fire during the week of July 16th, 2012, um, $1,500, 195 tax. So yeah, so it cost them 1695 I guess they had a running tab, so their tab was $2,500. And they actually put out a reward, $10,000 reward to anyone for the information leading to the arrest and conviction of the perpetrators of the double arson at the ONS in the early hours of July 15th. This is what I find really interesting because, you know, I've always wanted to know how much do these places actually make? Well, here we go. This is how much they make. Um, now, this is the store sales. So this would be their one store that they had and they break down how much money they make. So... So there's the years, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08. You know, pick a date. June of 2004, they made $25,000 in store sales. 
and then here's the grand totals. So they're making 268, 267, 300, 306, 325, 310, and then 2008 they made 247. So it really dropped off 2008, you know, because of recession there. All right, now guys, check this out. Okay, uh, textile clothing recycling. So if you look here, now a bale is a bale of clothing. So they had 27 bales of clothing in one shipment in uh, 07, 01, 11. Um, 1950 shoes. The total weight was 4,600 pounds and they made 7,368 bucks for that one shipment. So that's a, a, a bale of clothing is like you, you put it into a big compactor and it compacts all of the clothing into a cube and then you load it onto the truck with a forklift. So the bales are pretty heavy. So that's how much, you know, clothing recycling, it's, you know, no wonder the private industry uh, went into it because there's money to be made here. And here's all the, the companies where it went to. So Envirotex, Can Clothing, Scarborough. Uh, this one went to the Congo. It went to the Congo. 26 bales and 800 shoes for $8,500. Wow. So anyways, so this is all 2011. In 2011, they made $132,000 in textile recycling. Rag sales. So here's all the different companies that they sent rags to. Uh, Capital Elevator, an elevator company, National Arts Center. A bunch of other ones I don't really recognize. Walk in, I guess that would be like people walking in buying uh, rags. So they made three thousand dollars, three thousand dollars just selling rags. So I guess the point of showing the previous year was to show the year where they had the arson. You can see here they only made fifty thousand dollars in um, textile recycling compared to the previous year where they made one thirty-two. So that's quite a dip. So that's because of their fire that they had, I guess. So this is a letter from their lawyer. The Coles notes on this is that they have their lawyer um, contact the insurance company because the insurance company didn't, well, I don't really know what happened, but what, what they are saying what happened is that the insurance company didn't, didn't ad adequately advise them to have insurance on their actual stock. So they had no insurance on the stock. So you can imagine just like a Walmart burning down, for example, and Walmart not having any insurance on their inventory. It would just be a huge loss. So that's kind of what happened to them. Um, they had insurance cost, uh, insurance coverage for everything else, but not this. I found out later they took them to court. They took the insurance company to court and uh, you know they only got a little bit of money not not nearly enough what they needed. So uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you. I thought this one was funny. This one, this folder here, it's called Keep Your... You fill in the blank. Sorry, we couldn't accept your donation. Today's job, going to the dump. Ugh. And this is what I'm bringing today. It's going to be all paper and cardboard and books. There's a lot in here. I was keeping all these bins inside of my garbage container over there. Oh, this is all the stuff I've taken out of the storage locker. So I'm going to br bring it all to the dump, get it, rid of it in all one shot. But technically, I could put all this out at, my, at the curb. I could put it all at the curb there and let the garbage man take it. Um, but I don't know if he will take it. And if he doesn't, then I have to bring it all back. So... This way, just get rid of it all once. And... All right, we're back at this place again. So these are the bins, big black bins. Got to dump everything in. Walk up here, and you throw it in. Cardboard. Cardboard. Okay. Well, maybe I'll back up a little bit more and just start throwing it in. There we go, all done. It was a grand total of $12.90. That was well, well worth it to get rid of all that stuff all at once. 
So the great clothing sort continues. We've moved everything onto our front lawn here on this big tarp. Now it did rain um, a couple days. So everything got pretty wet. Well, a few things got wet, but we used the tarp to cover it up. But of course these tarps aren't completely waterproof. So we did, we are airing, uh, drying some stuff out over here. Now, if it were up to me, I would love to just bag all this stuff up and just get rid of it. But the missus has other plans. She wants to really sort through this and be able to find stuff. Now, I'm not the one in charge of clothing the kids, I'll be honest, so, but she is. So I'm, I get it. I know why, you know, we want to go through this and uh, try and find some stuff that we can use because of COVID, we haven't been able to buy any new, any new clothing for a while and the kids keep growing. So we are actually finding a lot of good stuff for the kids. Hello. <laughs> He's a wiggly, wiggly cat. Right over here, you can see where there's a dead grass line all the way around here. We had a giant tarp, I just cleaned that up today. Now this pile here, what's been happening is that it's been raining and then we try and just rush to cover it all. It rains, gets wet, we try and dry it out, it rains again and we try and dry it out again. So it rained again last night and so this stuff is just I mean, it was all spread out on the tarp, but it's just been getting wet, then dried out, wet, then dried out over and over. And now this particular pile right here, I think I'm done with it. I think uh, it's really dirty and um, I'll show you in a second, but I already have a whole bunch of clothing hanging up everywhere trying to dry it all. I think this pile here is going to landfill. I can't, you can't recycle wet clothing. They won't take it. Um, you can't do anything else with it. So unfortunately, this little pile here may have to go into the garbage. But that's the only pile that will that won't get recycled. Pile here, and uh, this is uh, more nicer stuff. Lots of jeans in here, and we're thinking of maybe selling this particular pile. It may be the only pile that we will, you know, try and try and uh, see if we can resell. There's some pretty nice clothing in here. A lot of it has the name tag, the tag still on it. So yeah, that's that's maybe a sell pile. There also may be some more clothing in there that we want back here i just put up some clothesline things so trying to dry out a whole bunch of clothing because last night we just had a huge giant thunderstorm so i'm trying to dry out as much of this stuff as i can and it's kind of sad because the only reason why i'm trying to trying to dry it out is because uh, uh just to recycle it because i can't um you know, there's nothing, nothing else you can do with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm putting in a lot of effort just to get it all bagged up and get it out of here. Uh, again, this is all stuff that I've put out today, trying to dry it out. And let's go over here and check out the pile of garbage bags full of clothing. This is all full of dry clothing so that's good so it's been out here in bags so i'm pretty confident none of this stuff is getting wet and when i stack the bags i kind of make sure that the the ends are pointing you know downwards um you know so that no water gets into the actual garbage bags but check this out i mean we lost count at around 60 bags um i think it's well over 100 and 100 and some and right now we're just trying to figure out who's going to take it because right now the problem is because of covid no one is picking up donations you know normally you would call uh canadian diabetes society or the kidney foundation or somewhere and they'll come with a truck and pick it all up because of, but because of covid they've stopped all that and there's no eta on when it's going to pick back up and over here is garbage we had one garbage day pass where I was able to put out about 12 bags of garbage, but there's a lot more, a lot more. As we're opening up all the clothing bags, it's not always just clothing. We have been finding other neat stuff. Like, like last night I found a nice pair of glasses. Where are they? Are they in here? Yeah, they're in here. Found a nice pair of glasses I'm going to keep for myself called uh, Riders. Never heard of it, but 
they're, they're nice. So they also have uh, some interchangeable lenses, two different colors there. So that's, I thought that was kind of neat. And still finding lots and lots of jewelry, lots of watches, vintage uh, Converse. Of all the clothing that we have been going through, I would say about 85% of it is women's clothing. And of that 85%, my wife pointed out, is that uh, it's all small. It's all super duper small. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show you that uh, teenage girls are buying a lot of clothing. Like, I just found this pair of jeans today, and it's actually pretty close to my size. I think this one is 34, 34. So nothing a belt that a belt won't fix for me. We have found about 10 pairs of jeans just for myself. And that's awesome because I have a hard time finding any clothing that fits because I'm my body is such an odd shape. <laughs> and this this here is a nice work coat. It's extra large, but I have to wear extra large because my my arms are so long. So those are two nice pieces I found today. So speaking of clothing that we're keeping, fortunately my porch has been commandeered for clothing sorting. Now, as Christine was going through all this stuff, all the clothing out there, we just did a quick kind of preliminary sort and we, we saw stuff that might fit us or the kids and so we just put it in here. Later we're going to go through this stuff again. We're probably only going to keep a small percentage of this stuff. This is uh, what we call the Max Sold Shed. Some of this stuff is from before our storage locker. So a lot of this stuff here is before the storage locker. But this one, for example, we got that in the, in the locker. It's a really nice heavy uh, aluminum pot. And same with this one back here. It's a Pyrex for Pyrex bowls. So that is lot number 28, 29. Now that's how we organize it is just what I'll do is I'll take something and I'll put it on this shelf that I built right here. I'll put it up there and then we'll take a picture and then we'll put a piece, piece of tape on it with the number and then put it on the shelf and we put it in order. So that stuff, that's something I had from before. This is some Life magazines that, uh, that I got from the locker. So a big, pile, big stack of Life magazines from the uh, 60s and 70s. Some comics from the locker. I had that from before. I got that in, in the locker. Same, just a bunch of random art. Eh, what's that one? Oh, there's some more stuff from the locker in there. 40, 41. Um, yeah, so it just keeps going down all the way down there. It's number 52 down there. Uh, number 53, kind of just a wreath making stuff. 54, that was a something I got from the locker. It's a, uh, a stained glass butterfly. It's really pretty. And then got that from the locker. This thing here is pretty broken, but uh, everything starts at a dollar for the max sold, max sold auction. So yeah, if I get a buck for that, I'm, I'm okay. And then I think it's, yeah, it stops right here. So that's the last one, number 58. Although I did make this one last night downstairs. So I have, this one's going to be number 59. I have to put the sticker on that first, but this is, uh, I got this from the storage locker. It's three packs of film negatives from 1910 and 1911, very old film negatives. And then there's also just an old uh, book in there from Bermuda. It's like a souvenir book. I'm not sure of the age. I'd like to show how the whole auction goes, but um, it's going to be a while. I still have quite a bit of work to do with it, and I'd like to, you know, get this video out and show you guys uh, what it's what happens when storage lockers go wrong. And uh, this thing did go wrong uh, mainly because there's just more than I could chew. I bit off way more than I could chew. So I'm definitely not going to lose any money on this storage locker. Uh, it's it was a lot of work, and I think the thing that bothers me is that it my time can be better allocated doing other things rather than doing menial tasks like putting clothing in garbage bags and sorting clothing and drying clothing. And I'll just be so happy to get this all behind me 
and move on. Uh, so, yeah, if I could redo it, I don't think uh, it's hard to say. Normally, I would not go to the store and buy 10 pairs of jeans for myself and then, you know, clothing for my whole family as well. Uh, so it, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I probably would do it again. <laughs> Just because I like free. I like stuff and I like it's exciting. It's a fun story to tell. So on that note, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate you guys. And hit the like button for me on the way out. And we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.